Hi guys, Jackie M for Masters of Malaysian Cuisine and welcome back to session two of our very, very special series where we're cooking recipes from Her Majesty uh, Queen Aziza of Malaysia's cookbooks and um, just want to say uh, um, thank you very much for letting us use your recipes to be able to run this series with. So we're very, very excited with uh, Zaleha Open, that rendang lady over in the UK, who's going to be cooking the uh, second recipe here. And also we've got a very, very special guest for the first time ever, not Noah here, Noah special, obviously. We've got Mark O'D, Mark O'D from originally from Kent in the UK, but he's now based in Malaysia. Mark's an extremely talented actor, TV host, and a YouTuber, and he's going to be co-hosting her. Uh, but uh, guys, let me just quickly play a quick clip from Tourism Malaysia. In the meantime, please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from and do a hashtag live. If you're watching this live, hashtag replay, <laughs> watching a replay. And also, don't forget, malaysianchefs.com slash join today is where you need to sign up if you want to get a copy of this recipe. But of course, if you want the entire set of these recipes from the Queen, go and check out cheminasayang.com. We're going to post a link to that in the comments in a little bit. But uh, we'll be back in 30 seconds. Like I said, I'll just play a quick clip from Tourism Malaysia. Truly Asia. Yay, guys. Thank you very much for joining us again. I'm Jackie M from Masters of Malaysian Cuisine, and this is our series number seven, our biggest ever yet. And we have that rendang lady, Zaleha Open, over in Bristol, UK. And she's going to be making a recipe from uh, the Queen's Cookbook, one of her cookbooks. Uh, Zaleha, what are you making? I'm making. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in to watch us today. Uh, Today I'm going to make a snack from one of the uh, from our one of our Queen's cookbook. It's called Mengelek Jagung or Mengelek Jagung, I think. Um, it's basically corn fritters. Mm. The beauty of this uh, snack cake is totally different than how we Malaysians make our chicho or chikodo. So it's going to be very very interesting. So I, I hope you stay on and watch us make this today. I love corn, so I can't wait to see this. And of course, like I said, we have a very special guest, Mark O'D, a very, very talented Englishman. Hey, Mark, great to see you. Hello, I'm, I'm feeling hungry already. <laughs> wow, that sounds really exciting. I mean, I love, I love Malaysian food. I've never tried this before. And it's a shame I'm actually not in Bristol right now because I would, lo I would love to try that. You know? How ironic oh, is that though? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> ironic that we've got a Malaysian cooking Malaysian food in Bristol and an Englishman over in Malaysia who's stuck do, in the bed. Do, do you want to know a fun story? So so I wanted to do, to do a collaboration um, and I assumed that I assumed that, that, that you were in Malaysia and it was so funny because I was in Malaysia and I reached out and I said I said oh we should do this this food cooking video and and you were like I'm in Bristol and I had no I had no <laughs> idea whatsoever but when I go back to England we will make that cooking video, won't we? Definitely, definitely. Look, when you messaged me, I thought you were in England. And I was like, oh, yeah. Me. <laughs> 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 oh, that is hilarious. No, we should all go to uh, go to Malaysia, right? And do it properly there, I reckon. Yes, but definitely. anyway, yeah. all right, guys, let me disappear and I'll come back and say hello in a little bit. But um, like I said, Mark is going to be hosting Zaleha. So take it away, Mark, and all the best, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Hi, Mark. Hello, hello, hello. I'm very, I'm very excited for this today. I'm, I'm happy I'm going to have to cook as well uh, because I'm not the best chef in the world. So maybe I can learn something today from you. It's definitely because I do, I do watch you cook a few times, but then um, this is something different. This is something new uh, on my side as well. This is very, very different than what I have cooked before. So I'm really, really excited to try our Queen's recipe. Jinjong Kase Tuan Ku, thank you for letting us um, uh, just cook all your recipes for December and we are really, really excited about it. And I hope you guys too. 
Yeah, this, uh, it sounds very, very exciting. So so this dish you're making today, it's a very traditional Malaysian dish, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and where, where, would you, where would you have it normally? Is it is it a snack or it's something you have for dinner, something you have for lunch, a special occasion? What's what's the theme for this dish? Right, to me, I think, uh, because you have lived in Malaysia as well, so you know Malaysian eat anything, any time of the day, basically. But this is because it's, it's basically like cucur udang, except oh, this is more okay, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is more like cucur jagung, because the main ingredient here is the corn um, that we are going to use. And you, it uses very, very little flour as well. And this dish from the cookbook, from Tuanku's cookbook, is from Bentong Pahang, which is, I'm not sure if you know where Bentong is. If you want to go back to, if you want to go towards the, East side of Malaysia. Gender bike, gender bike right? Yeah. Bentong. Yeah. Yes, somewhere, somewhere around there. So you will go down to Bentong. Yeah. So this dish is actually from Bentong. What, what, what I find strange about Malaysia sometimes, well, not strange, it's, it's very fascinating. Um, uh, like obviously, Sayadari England, uh, Tapi, when I came to Malaysia, I saw all these dishes being created with corn, and I was shocked. Because um, in the UK, I'm sure you know, we only have like corn on the cob or we mm. have corn as, as just the vegetables. And then I came to Malaysia and you guys have like corn ice cream. And I was like, what? Like, I'm what? Like, yeah, like you guys eat corn ice cream and then things like ABC and the chendol. Um, as, a, as, as a Matt Saleh, I still find that strange. But I've learned to adapt. And actually, there's some really good dishes that, that use corn. I mean, like this, like like the Queen's recipe, um, which I would love to try. But like I said, mm-hmm. unfortunately, you're in Bristol. I'm in Malaysia. Yeah. Fat yeah. time. But you can always visit next time when you come back. It's not too yeah. far. Exactly. Bristol. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for the recipe today is for Mengelek Jago, as I mentioned just now. So the main ingredients for our recipe would be corn it's um today i'm using uh corn in a can sweet corn in a can because i didn't manage to get hold of the fresh sweet corn from the supermarket so it's basically sweet corn similar it's just um less work that you don't have to shave it off from the husk and for that also you will need flour you will need eggs because the eggs and there are very little water used for this fritters, so we don't really use a lot of water like when we make uh, chucho udang or chucho ikan bilis in Malaysia. Yeah, it's different. You also, oopsie, you also need some turmeric to give the color and the flavor as well. Mm-hmm. This is two different things that I I find fascinating with this recipe because it uses some fennel and some curry leaves so they are basically some um indian influence in it basically if i could say because fennel and curry leaves are definitely indian uh kind of see, see, that's, that's, that's what i mean if you if you if you told an english person or uh, a matzalei yeah. in europe i'm gonna mix sweet corn with curry leaves they would say what are you doing but in the yeah. later, it goes really well together um so it that, does. I, that's one great thing about Malaysia. You can put all these things together and it actually makes sense. But for, 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 for somebody who's not Malaysian or maybe not from Southeast Asia or, or India or somewhere, they would find that really strange. Curry leaves and sweet corn. But um, yeah, like I said, I'm sure it's going mm. sure to be good. Does it, does it take a long time to make this? Is it something easy that, you know, uh, bad, bad chefs like myself can do or, or how, how does that work? Trust me, it's super easy. I've made it a few days ago to make sure I get it all right. And it's really, really super easy to make. It, okay, you, you say super easy, quick. but you're, you're, you're a very good chef. Okay, for normal people so, like us. Ken? No, it's really, I promise you, it's very, very easy. It's really not much ingredients in there as well. All okay. the thing that you need to be careful is when you're deep frying it. That, that's it, that's it. You basically mix everything into a bowl stir them, put them into a nice, uh, basically nice batter, and you're going to fry them. That's it. And you enjoy it with some sweet chili sauce or some Malaysian Maggi chili sauce or Malaysian Lingam chili sauce, anything really, right. or you could eat it every day. So, so, so you live in Bristol. Is it hard to get Malaysian? I'm sure you get this question a lot. 
because when I when I was cooking in England and I made kway tiao um, and I made mm -hmm. pineapple tarts and a few things, I found it so hard to find the ingredients. I had to go to the Asian supermarket and they still didn't have the things I wanted. Like for instance, the kway tiao, I, I found it really hard to get the fish cakes. I found it really hard to get certain spices and you'll go to Tesco's and Sainsbury's and they have all these these ready-made packs or these spices, but uh, mm -hmm. they seem very commercialized. What, what's your experience with, with uh, did, uh, when, do you go to Malaysia and have to bring it all back? Is that legal or, yeah? What's <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a bit worried to say something now because there are, <laughs> that you, uh, there are things that you cannot bring into UK, like ikan bilis, things like that, you know, but because I think I'm quite lucky because it's always the port of transfer for us in Bristol. Uh, we used to fly on either KLM or uh, Qatar Airways from Cardiff. So it's, it's usually we don't go through Heathrow, which is very, very straight in terms of what you bring in or what you're yeah. taking out. Um, so I used to sneak in Ikan Belief, which is the main ingredient, the main important thing that I need in my house. So Ikan Belief, um, Udang Kering, which is uh, uh, dried shrimps. Those are things that we couldn't get decent one here in Bristol and also um what do you call it um bunga kantan if you know torch ginger that is a definitely no you cannot ever get it anywhere I couldn't even get it in London so it's that one is a little bit tricky wow. other than that we could get almost everything in Bristol in a shop called Waii Hong which is which is owned by a Malaysian yay oh wow so yeah, I'm, sure, I'm, so, sure, I'm sure there's one thing they don't have in Bristol. I'm sure they don't have durian trees growing outside. They don't. No. Durian's okay. the best, the best, the best. And if you if you if you try and smuggle durian in your suitcase, I think they would smell it and you'd probably get found out, right? Definitely. So I don't yeah. dare I don't dare smuggle any durian. I buy <laughs> durians here, but they're mostly from Thailand. It's not Malaysian durian, but yeah. craving satisfied basically. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, I'm just looking at some of the comments uh, to say hi to some of our guests. Um, Lee Lee Winters says, Wing Yip Supermarket Croydon. Have you heard of that one? Wing Yip? No. No. I've not no? been to Croydon, the supermarket in Croydon. Oh, okay. I've not been. Yeah, so, um, no, not, not been there. But the one I used to go is the one in Chinatown in London, which uh, also have almost everything, yeah. I see, I see, I see. Okay, and we also, because I, I know you can't see many of the comments because you're cooking, so I'll just read them out. We have people from Teruganu. Hello. We have people from Kuda. We have Haslina from Shah Alam. How are you? Hi, uh, Haslina. We have someone from Germany, Bibi Vitlastin. Hello from Germany. Interesting. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, so shall we start? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Okay, right. You First, you will need the corn. It's going to go into this bowl. Oh, I forgot to chop the shallots. Let me chop the shallots first, the shallots and chili. So we also need shallots and uh, red chilies. You can also use um, chili paddy. I think if you like it spicier, but I'm I'm cool with um, using just uh, red chilies. So we are going to just slice it thinly. Um, oh, the tables are shaking. <laughs> We're going to add in the shallots, the chilies, into the, the mixing bowl later on. And we are going to make a quick batter. How many do you think? A lot of, is it very, is it sangat pedas or just tiki tiki? Uh, pardon? I didn't hear you. What was it again? Are you using, are you using a lot of chilies or just tiki tiki? Is it sangat pedas? I suka sangat pedas. I really suka pedas. So I'm going to put all these red chilies in there. But having said that, I'm not putting in any um, chili padi, which is uh, the, spiciest, the spiciest of the chilies, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to put in um, red chilies in there. Um, it's not too spicy, to be honest, because this one is you know, if you go to supermarkets in UK, when you buy chilies, they would put pictures of those chilies with two, three, four, and five marks on those chilies. So this one is um, just three. So it's not it's not too spicy, this one. 
Okay, I see. Well, when I make it, I think I'll we'll make half the chilies just so I survive. Oh, Lee Winters says, I went from Chinatown to Liverpool um, streets on the tube with a durian, and somebody said they could smell it. Oh, last. There you go. So I have done the chopping bit. Now I am going to add in the prawns. Uh, you can use as much as you like, I think. If you like prawns, a lot of prawns, you can put more prawns. But if you don't, then I think adding in prawns is good, isn't it? A lot of prawns. Oh, Mark's missing. Mark's uh, camera's just dropped out, but he'll be back in a second. So uh, okay. we're just uh, saying hello to some of our commenters. Yeah, here. okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> <I'm back. laughs> cool. I'll come back and say hello to the uh, commenters in a bit. But okay, let me just remove myself. Yeah, sorry about that. No worries. So I'm just basically um, crushing a bit of the shallots, uh, separating the shallots just now that I've added in. I should have done it earlier but no and we've got that we also have eggs to bind it we just need two eggs to the recipe calls for us to beat the egg before we add it in i'm just going to grab a fork there you go so lightly lightly there We're going to just lightly beat those and put them in there. It uses very little flour. I'm going to add it there. And now we're going to add in the flavoring bit. We've got turmeric now. It goes in. We've got salt. Salt. The curry leaves, I think I would like to tear it a little bit rather than putting it in whole to give it more flavor. Ooh, what happened to the connection? Right, so, 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 oh my gosh, it smells so good. And yesterday I managed actually to find fresh curry leaves. For about a while I couldn't get all this, so the panel's going in now. Where did you get the coloring leaves from? I got it from, um, where did I get it from? Oh, I got it from Sainsbury's. Was Sainsbury's? No, no. What is it? Oh, I got it from Mr. Singh. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Singh is the, yeah, Mr. Singh shop. We call, we call him Mr. Singh because he's been there for like forever and ever. He has this little um, grocery shop that sells uh, lovely Indian vegetables, um, Malay vegetables like kacang panjang. Um, yeah. So I nipped in the other day to get some uh, keropok and I found fresh curry leaves. I was like, you won't believe I could dance in there. It's so excited. <laughs> I would have loved to see that. So we have one comment oh. from Zufri Rene says, very proud to be able to cook our beloved Queen's recipes. Now the world can try them. So I, I want to ask a question. How do you think Ooh. Malaysians can help promote uh, Malaysian food because honestly as as a foreigner living in Malaysia I would say that I think the, one of the best things about Malaysia mm -hmm. is food so how would you how do you think like Malaysians can promote food more what what things can they do in your opinion see there, there are a lot I think to be honest with you personally there are a lot of ways for us to promote our food to me, where I have been living abroad for the last 20 over years, so the way I promote my Malaysian food is by cooking for my friends and uh, for the expat family that we were all in together yeah. because um, that, that is the way I introduce my food. I will never cook other food when I invite people to the house. I do, I do English food. I do even for my husband's side of the family. They don't do too much spice as well, but... When I invite them to the house, it's always the Malaysian food. It, it's uh, just, I, yeah, I think it's just the way, uh, the way I promote my food. And also here over here, I do supper clubs, I do pop ups, and I do um, Saturday takeaway as well for for my suburb, my postcode. And that is the way I do. But for others, I think the best way is to introduce your food, to cook your food, 
uh, for the foreigners, for them to try our food. That's, that's the only way for you actually to tell them this is how good Malaysian food are. Because yeah. if you just say, oh, our food is really good, they will say, yeah, yeah, okay, your food is good. But if you no. cook it and you let them try it, you have that, like, there you go. It's in front of you, try it. You will love it. Something like that. Yeah, I agree. And I think I think maybe some of the tour companies, they could perhaps, you know, have, have, have part of their tour to be, you know, a whole day or half a day just trying all the different Malaysian foods. Because, I mean, there are great sites here in Malaysia, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, mm. When I bring my friends over, when my mum came down. But the thing they all said was, oh, my God, the food is so nice. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think mm. there's ways, you know, Malaysians could, could uh, I mean, everyone, because it's, it's such a shame that not everyone in the, in the world knows about Malaysian food because they really should because it's so awesome. Oh, fantastic. So, well, you're asking about that now. So, what is your favourite Malaysian food? Whoa, banyak lah, banyak, banyak. I think, um, okay, <laughs> you're, it's going to be very surprising. Okay, so I made a video about it recently, but my favourite Malaysian food... Um, I think it's got to be beef rendang. I think I do love beef rendang. Um, you do love beef rendang. Uh, wow. Yeah, I, I I like mine crispy as well. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> um, so beef rendang is great. Um, I love putu bamboo, but I don't know if it's oh if it's Indonesian or Indonesian. Everyone says, oh, it's from Indonesia. It's from is, is putu bamboo Malaysian or is Malaysian and Indonesian? I, to be honest with you, I think putu bamboo is Indian. Indian, okay. Yeah, Putu is definitely Indian, but uh, as you know, all the South Asian countries have their own version of Putu, Putu Bambu yeah. and things like that. But we all, I think it's from India. It's from South India, um, definitely. Uh, okay, but, I've learned something today. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you have <laughs> um, Kwe Tiao, of course, is a must. Absolutely love it. Um, I love, um, I mean, I... Actually, I really like all the Raya foods. The Raya foods are absolutely fantastic. Oh, of course. I mean, of yeah, course. But, you cannot not love Raya food, isn't it? Yeah, and all the and also all the all the cakes and all the um all the quay. I love all the quay. Like sometimes when I do shooting, we'll have like the food trucks and they'll just have all this quay that I've never tried before. All these colourful oh things. These pancakes is really nice. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> <laughs> you're making all of us now crave, especially those who live abroad like us we are uh, we love our we love our food we as my husband said you can take this girl out of malaysia but cannot take the malaysia out of her which is the truth i love my malaysian food i need my rice every other day i do chips yeah. but i will go back to my rice with curries yeah. or with asam pedas and my chak kway tiao mi goreng you know things like that yeah. How about you? Yeah. I mean, this is this. I mean, you cook a lot of food. What? Okay. So, what if you had the Queen of England, okay, coming to your house, and you had to cook the Queen of England a Malaysian dish? What dish would you impress her with? Which, which one would you? Lemak. Like if you had to. Nasi lemak, nasi lemak and rendang. Nasi lemak and rendang. Okay. Yes, it's definitely. I think that is uh, our national dish. We love it, and. I think it's the best suit because it's a complete meal and it, it, it portrays Malaysia, it portrays me as a Malaysian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. what, here's, here's a fun fact about me. So I've lived in Malaysia for seven years now, but saya tak tahan nazi bila saya wake up in the morning. I, I cannot <laughs> eat bread in the morning. I, I just cannot. It's just, I think I'm too British. It work. It's, I, you are. I, because for me, rice is like, something you have for dinner or lunch and when I wake up I still want to have my cereal or my toast and I, I'm sorry I just can't do it I can't eat rice in the morning I find it so strange um but, no, yeah. don't worry about it don't worry yeah. about it because my husband still doesn't eat rice in the morning it was like 20 over years we've been together but he will not he will not he's just like Malaysians are crazy why do you eat rice in the morning I think because we eat rice in the morning that's yeah, exactly. you know, we, we, yeah, we love our rice, so we eat rice day and night, even yeah. in the evening. Even when you're hungry at 2 in the morning, you just go to the stalls, anywhere, street stalls, and you get nasi lemak. So we are just Malaysian. We just love Lee, our nasi. Lee, Win Lee Winter says you should give the Queen a fish head curry with no cutlery. I'm not sure the Queen of England would, 
would uh, be able to do that. She's she's very fancy. I'm not sure she would be able to, you know, uh, pick out the fish. Yeah. Interesting to see, but I don't think I that would I'll happen. Probably get, I'll probably get my visa cancelled then if I serve her fish. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, guys, going? these are the mixture now that I have done. If you guys want to see that. There you go. Can you see it? Ooh. Oh. Yeah, so that's basically, ooh, there you go. The mixture. It looks that way. I have actually heated up the oil and it's on, oh gosh, please work. <gasps> Is it good? Working? <laughs> I don't know. I was a bit worried then. Right, let me see if it's hot now. Right, it's hot. I'm going to now scoop in those fritters and just get And it goes that way. Oh, I can hear it sizzling. I'm getting hungry already. Yeah. It smells so good because of the curry leaves, actually, and the fennel. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, it does. It does look good. I mean, yeah. I can't. It smells nice because I can't smell it, but it does look very nice. It smells really good. I am super excited. Does your husband like this, or has he has he not tried it yet? Uh, he tried it the other day. He liked it. He thinks um, it's very very different. He likes it because. Um, it has prawns in it because we love to chow down. Mm. And he thinks he's a keeper, this recipe. I thought so as well because look at that. Oh, yum. Oh, wow. It comes together quite quick, actually. I mean, you put the corn yeah. in and you already... I mean, I can't see it too well, but um, it looks like it's all, it's all coming together very quickly. Oh, yeah. Wow. There you go. Amazing. Yeah. So that it works, it, it holds the flour, although we use very little flour just now in it, it's like 75, uh, 150 grams of, 100 grams of flour. Yeah. It works really well because the eggs are actually binding it as well, the two eggs. So we don't use too much water in there. Uh, if, we, if we do the Malaysian, the typical Malaysian chicho udang or the typical Malaysian chicho ikabiles, we don't put eggs in but we use uh, water and baking powder but this one looks so good how, how long how long is this gonna take by the way because it looks like it looks like it's very quick already you just put it in how how long it will be probably another few minutes when it's nice and brown it's done basically oh. yeah there you go guys you've so heard it You've heard it from the Queen's recipe herself. But if you want something quick, simple, easy to make, it smells good, the spice, this looks like the perfect treat. It is. It is actually a perfect snack. For us. This is going to be our brunch this morning. So it saved me making anything else. And yeah, I'm going to actually have it with sweet chili sauce, I think. What, what would you suggest, Mark? I, I think you're asking the wrong person because I'm not a very good cook, but I would probably have it, I would probably have it on its own because I, I enjoy crispy food. I, want, I like to crunch it. For me, oh. when you put all the sauce on top, um, it ruins that crunchiness. Like I, I'm very busy. I don't normally like to have a lot of sauce on, on crispy things um, ah. um, because I, I, I like to have that first crunch, you know, to really get the texture. When I put sauce on things, it kind of loses that crunchiness, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I would probably just outsource first, and then I would try it with some sweet chilli sauce, but not too chilli, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not too, not too spicy for you then. Yeah, exactly. So, so from, from the Queen's cookbook, what other, what other uh, recipes are in there that, that you think are, are quite good? Oh, I've, I've cooked a lot from the cookbook. I've made the gulai kawa. I've made the ayam masak hitam. I have made uh, the kueh. Lots of the kueh I've made. I've made the kasvi. I've made the... Uh, yesterday, uh, my daughters uh, made uh, talam... Talam suji, yes. Uh, talam suji, which is a uh, two uh, kueh, Malaysian kueh, obviously. It's a layered of... The bottom bit is made from semolina and the top bit are made from... Um, if you know kueh kasvi... 
kuih lompang is a is like a black kuih uh, that you roll in coconut milk in the coconut desiccated coconut. So it's basically two recipes that have been put into one kuih. They're so good. They are really yeah. really good. Yeah, we made the kuih and my daughter made the kuih yesterday. It's so okay. yummy. So well, when, when, I do. When, the when, when I, problem, I, pardon. Uh, when I go back to England, I think I might have to bring the Queen's cooking book uh, to, to cook with my mum because it was quite fun last time. So I think maybe I will. I'll, I'll try this. I'll try making this and I'll send you a picture or may, maybe I'll I'll put you on FaceTime and then you can just make sure we don't burn down the kitchen. Definitely. Or the best way is you could come to Bristol and cook with me. Yes, that, that sounds like a better idea. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, they're ready! Wow, so quick! Yeah. Oh. They are done. So fast! Wow! And, uh, look at that! Wow, they look so crispy. They just. Wow. So done. Mm. So done. And I think this is this is a snack where you don't have to eat a lot. I think because it's because it's fries, I think, you know, just, just a few will, will satisfy you. It's not something where you have to eat a lot of, right? Yeah, um, I would eat a lot <laughs> because I like <laughs> fried food <laughs> and I'll exercise, I'll go to the gym later, but this is, ouch, it's hot. So this is basically the fritters. You look at how crispy they are. Ooh. Can you hear it? <laughs> Excuse me, can you stop eating? You're making all, all of us jealous. We can't eat it. That's not very fair, no. is it? Sorry, really sorry, but I have to try it. I have to say <laughs> it's really good. So yeah. I really need to try it. So let me just give one bite. Oh. Mm -hmm. So good. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Okay, you know so what? how would you describe this taste to somebody that's never, never tried this before? Now you've just bit it. How would you describe mm -hmm. it in like 20 seconds to somebody that, that you know, you're trying to get to try it? What, what does it taste okay. like? It's sweet because the hint from the, the corn makes it nice and sweet. But the fennel, when you bite into the fennel, uh, it, it gives a little bit of spice of uh, herbs on it. The fennel smells good. The curry leaves is just like to die for. It's just so, so good. I might add in more curry leaves, I think, if I make it again next time. Um, and the flour gives it just a little bit of bite so you don't feel guilty about having eating too much carbs. Yeah. Because it's very, very little flour in there. The eggs makes it so soft and so good. So supple. It's so good. I'm going yeah. to try one more. Wow, that looks really, oh, that looks really nice. I'm just going to look at some stop. comments um, here. But, oh, we're back. Jackie, how, Jackie, yeah. are you hungry? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah look, I'm definitely going to have a go. I, I love sweet corn. I'm like... Like what Mark was saying, it's quite true, actually, how Malaysians incorporate sweet corn into everything, right? And I love, like, sweet corn ice cream, and I love, like, sweet corn kueh and all that. So I'm going to have a go at making this. But, uh, yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We want to actually, you know, interrogate Mark now because, obviously, he's yeah. new to our MOMC universe. So, Mark, what brought you to uh, Malaysia originally, and what do you do there now? Uh, so I came to Malaysia about six years ago. Um, I used to do I used to do a few West End shows in London. So I was in the musical theatre industry, um, and then I came over to Malaysia uh, to be part of this like singing this boy band singing group. Um, very very strange story. Um, it didn't work out, but I stayed in Malaysia um, because I got offered a role on a TV show called the ATV Cricket. Um, so I was I was one of the hosts for that. And then I moved to Astro Super Sports, where I'm at now still. Um, and ever since then, I've just kept making YouTube videos um, about Malaysia. I do a lot of like uh, parodies, a lot of silly videos. Um, yeah, I'm just in enjoying life and very happy to be here in Malaysia. But I'm not happy today because I really want some of that that food right now <laughs> don't be all don't be all <laughs> now um with because uh, you do a bit of tv hosting and for those of us who live overseas right there's a malaysian tv um not TV, uh, movie on netflix that i actually saw a couple of years back and i didn't realize mark was actually in it until i read his cv just now and yep. it's called <laughs> um what's it called again mark oh that's called uh rising kalila the movie yeah 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Right. Yeah. So if you if you guys have Netflix, go and look Mark up on that. Right. And so he does he does scripted shows. He's an actor, and also he does a lot of TV hosting and all that as well. So um, what is your YouTube channel, Mark, so people can look you up? My YouTube channel is just my name, so you can just type in Marco D. I have some cooking videos there as well. Um, not not. Mm. On uh, who, the, wants, who wants to see Mark cook? How about we bring him back one of these days, right? And have him cook for yeah. MLC at heart. What do yeah. you think? Yeah. 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 Nazi Lamac fish and chips. Yeah. You, you guys might be horrified, but maybe you can check it out and give, 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 yeah. A, give a review. Yeah. <laughs> Nazi Lamac fish and chips. All right. Now, um, now that you're in Malaysia, uh, how often do you go back to the UK? And has your family come over to visit you? And how do they feel about this whole arrangement? Um, I go back maybe twice or three times a year. Usually for Christmas, I will go back, but um, I can't go back now because, of course, coronavirus is in the air, mm. so it's not not safe to go back. Um, so it's going to be very sad because I can't really celebrate Christmas how I usually do. Um, but normally, I go back twice, yeah, twice or three times. And my mum has been to Malaysia three times as well, um, and she loves it. I mean, I was saying earlier. Um, she just loves the food, so she she really really um, craves Malaysian food all the time uh, because she loves spicy things. So she comes here, and um, so funny story about my mum. She says I really like spicy food, and she came to one of the shops in Malaysia to eat, and the waiter said, "Oh, very spicy," and she was like, "Oh, I love spicy food." So the <laughs> The English level of spice is completely different to the Malaysian level of spice. So she tried it and her mouth was burning. So, yeah, she 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 realized that Malaysia's version of spicy is this compared to like the Indian level of spice. <laughs> yeah, we do with a different level of spice as well. Because in the yeah. UK, when you go down to the UK restaurant, you say, yeah, please make it extra spicy. And it's OK, extra slot for chili. I said, yeah, for chili. And you come back and it's still not spicy. So that, as, you, as you said, Mark, the level of spicy for us is totally different than how you guys. And we say, you should put eight chilies in there. And I was like, no, you can't. Because it's, it's just the way we like our spicy food. Yeah, you, I'm, I'm sure you probably bring like a, a secret supply of chili paddy to all the English <laughs> restaurants. And then when the waiter's not looking, you just, you just put it inside, right? <laughs> My husband will be horrified. He will not take me out again. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take her anyway. Yeah. Now, Mark, um, can can anyone still find your uh, boy band act anywhere on YouTube? Someone wants to know what it was called. Uh, we, uh, I'm not, not going to tell you. I mean, if you really if you really want to be Sherlock Holmes, you, you probably can find it. Uh, but I'm not I'm not going to encourage you to. Yes. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. now, and, uh, Mark, I have two questions from my girls for you. They were uh, my girl, my daughter, my youngest daughter. Actually, she went to school today, so she said, "Don't forget to ask Mark or Jay these two questions. What is your favorite Malaysian adopted word? Because she has her own adopted word that she loves to use when she goes back to Malaysia." Yeah. And another question she asked me to ask you, what is the food that you really cannot stand in Malaysia? Because she also has something that she really can't do, even she's half Malaysian, she can't do. What's that? What food doesn't she like? Durian. Oh, durian. Okay, I think me and your daughter will get on very well then, because I like that durian. <laughs> yeah. Um, Every year we have a video of her trying the durian since she was like, four years old, we'll, we'll video her trying the durian. So last year she tried the durian and she was like, she tried and then she walked away gently, politely, she was saying, mom, don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> no, Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, durian, I, I don't want to insult the fruit because I know it's your, it's Malaysia pride, but um, for, for a British person, it's very hard because, because for Europeans, fruit is like considered very sweet and you put it in your mouth and it's like very refreshing. But durian is very creamy. So it, it doesn't feel like a fruit to me. That, that's my that's my problem with durian. It sounds like it's like, like my enemy or something. But um, I, that's why I've never really liked durian. And I think the smell is quite, I mean, everyone knows that. 
Um, and everyone says to me, oh, try it again, try it again. Yeah, try it again. But <laughs> every year, and it's the same thing. So I just think me and Durian are just not meant to be. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And what's your favorite adopted Malaysian habit or word? Um, so when I went back to England um, about three months ago, I realized that I actually say quite a lot of Malaysian words. So I was speaking to my English friend and I said, I, we, we were filming a video together. And I said to her something like, um, you can send me on Saturday, can. You know, like how <laughs> Malaysian say, oh, like la 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 la, can. So yeah. I was Oh, you could. Can we do the video on Saturday? Can and then she was like, "What can?" And I was like, "Can." And she was like, "What? what are we using it? Why, why are you talking about a can? Like you know, like a can." Can, 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 can you do it? And she was like, "Why are you talking like that?" And I was like, "Oh my god, it's like the it's a Malaysian habit because we always say like, oh, like uh, uh, we do this can can you know what I mean?" So so that's probably yeah. number one number. Who is probably la? I, I do like saying la quite la. a lot. It's a very yeah. fun word. You can just yeah. use it in anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark, it's, it's, I want to ask Malaysia. you about Malaysia. How widely travelled are you around Malaysia? Have you mostly stayed in Kuala Lumpur? Oh no, I, I do a lot of. I've done a lot of travel shows before, so I think I've been to more states than most Malaysians. Actually, I've I've been to every single state in Malaysia. Um, wow. I've been to like Penang over ten times, Sabah over six times, um, because we do a lot of. I just recently did a travel show in uh, Perak, so I was there for about three weeks as well. Um, nice. I've been everywhere, I love it. I've seen the whole of Malaysia. Fantastic. Now, so to someone who's never been to Malaysia, what would you tell them to compare and where would you suggest that they actually go first? Okay, so if you were visiting Malaysia for the first time, I would say, I would say you could do a lot in a week. I mean, I know people say, oh, you need at least two weeks. I've had friends that have come here for one week and I would suggest definitely have a whole day to try food, you know, go to like um, even if you're in KL or PJ, just try all the different food, like the hawker stalls. Um, I think you need need at least three days by a beach because the beaches here are Sangat Chanti, very nice. Um, so I would suggest maybe you, you go to, to Sabah or you go somewhere um, like Bahintian mm -hmm. or for two days oh, okay. to see how beautiful the beaches are. Um, I would say hike is very nice here. Like the hikes, the sites you can see are really good. Um, I think like when my mum came, I just, I kind of took her to all the places that I go to on a, a daily basis because she's not really somebody that's like, oh, I want to, you know, go, go for a party or I want to, to do this. She wanted to see how I lived in Malaysia and, mm. uh, I just basically let her try all the food. We went to the beaches. So I think, I think for sure, number one must go to a beach because the beach is here. Mm are so underrated, you know? Everyone goes to like Bali and places. Bali's great, but there's some beaches in Malaysia that are so much better than Bali, but no one yeah. cares about them, you know? I think we need to we need to all like promote more um, Malaysia and just, just show how awesome the beaches are here, especially. And as I said earlier, the food, because it is like some of the best food in the world, but we need to put Malaysia on the map more so more people know about all the different um, recipes, because I don't mean to, to be nasty to my own country, but in England, right, you, you say to me, like, oh, what is English food? The problem is we have mm. so many, like, um, different cultures here. There's, there's not anything that's actually English. Like, I think, I think curry was voted the number one uh, popular dish in England, and that's not even... An English thing that was that's from India, but Malaysia has so many uh, meals that are Malaysian. Um, mm. Malaysia, so I just think that the food as well, food, beaches, yeah, chanty chanty. There you go, guys. Make sure you can. And I, 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 I'm going to go back and look up all your travel shows because I love travel shows. So I'm really, really yeah. keen to check them out, guys. So don't forget to look up Marco D on YouTube, and also I'm assuming you're on TikTok. Of course, I'm on TikTok. Okay. Yeah, I'm on TikTok. 
<laughs> All right. Well, it's been such a pleasure to have you. And we look, well, everyone's actually commenting. They want to see you cook. So um, whether you come and join us live or you send us a clip of you cooking, we'd love to play them during one of our broadcasts. I know you're a very, very busy guy. So we're very, very privileged to have been able to get you on board with this. Um, Zaleha, that looks like another amazing recipe. Guys, if you want this yeah, recipe exactly. and everything else that we do, make sure you sign up MalaysianChefs.com slash join today. And um, yeah, Lee Winter says top man. That's high praise coming from an Aussie, by the way. <laughs> the Aussies are very cynical types. Oh, All right. Kasmina, Kasmina says the girls chanty chanty. Yes, Malaysian girls very beautiful too. <laughs> there, there you go. That's why he's been there for seven years. All right. Yeah, that's, that's the whole reason. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much again. Uh, don't forget to check out the Queen's cookbooks at cheminasayam.com as well. All right. I posted the comments, mm -hmm. uh, posted in the comments earlier. And um, we coming up this Wednesday, we have another broadcast. And this time we have celebrity chef. Um, um, Chef Ismail Ahmad, who's going to be joining us, and uh, Lisa Yeo, who was so popular in our last series, she's going to be coming back mm. as well. So make sure you guys tune in for that. That's coming up this Wednesday. And again, thank you so much, Saleha. That was amazing work as usual. Thank you. I love your setup. Your you look beautiful today, by the way. <laughs> and thank you again so much, Mark. Uh, we'd love to have you back anytime you want to come back. Let us know, and we'll slot you in. Okay. Thanks Great. again, guys. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, and we'll bump out as well. Tourism Malaysia. Ciao. Bye bye. bye.